Hey everyone and welcome to Talk ETFs. My name is Sumit Roy and I'm Senior Analyst here at ETF.com. Today we're going to be talking about two big trends in ETFs, active and thematic. And at the intersection of those two trends is a firm called Strategus, who's the issuer of two active thematic ETFs. Nick Bonesack is the co-founder of that firm and he's with me today. Thanks so much for taking the time, Nick. You're an established Sumit. I appreciate it. So Nick, you have two active multi-themed ETFs, SAMT and SAGP. SAMT has gotten a lot of good traction recently. It recently crossed $80 million in assets under management. Can you tell us how this fund works? We're very excited about it. I think, you know, for, for those who know uh, Strategus, you'll you know, recall we're a macro research firm and we've been doing that uh, for close to 20 years uh, as a team. And, you know, one of the sort of the principal tenets of our research is to try and always find the investable conclusion because macro, you know, macro can get out of hand pretty quickly. So we want to, you know, we want to have some utility uh, for our clients. And, and ultimately that sort of reveals itself in the form of, of stock baskets and, and other portfolios that we can uh, invest in really along very thematic lines. And, and so ultimately the answer to your question is this sort of came together uh, as a, uh, as a thematic ETF where we could rotate through different themes over time as they gathered and lost momentum uh, against the business cycle. Uh, and so we, you know, we invest in, you know, our three to five highest conviction ideas uh, in the moment. So Nick, it's super interesting. I'm looking at the current themes that SAMT is invested in, things like deglobalization, cash flow aristocrats, recession protection, and energy security. These all seem to be themes that were very in vogue in 2022, but if the macro climate changes to reward other themes, how quickly can this ETF pivot to capture that? And what gives you the confidence that this ETF won't be late to any regime shift? It's really twofold. Number one is that, that our research process uh, on the macro side of the house is sort of exploring the business cycle every day. So if we see See things that are gathering momentum and even sort of in our own mind starting to eclipse the themes that are invested in the portfolio, that's going to reveal itself to us and to our clients uh, in, you know, in our research output. So it, it'll be as plain as it would be on the front page of the, of the newspaper. And then I'm, in terms of, you know, managing the portfolio, you know, it's, it's simply making that decision that, hey, you know, theme number A might be losing a little shine, theme number B uh, might be the, the sort of the new uh, the new thing we want to ride with, and, and we can make those changes pretty quickly. That makes a lot of sense, Nick. And do you expect the current themes of the ETF to stick around for a while? The idea is to really invest in themes that will be durable over their intermediate term. So we're looking out, you know, 9, 12, 15 months. We're not chasing fads or things that are happening, you know, in the moment and may dissipate uh, very quickly. For us, the, when we looked at the landscape of thematic ETFs, so they generally strike us as all being monoline. So each of the ETFs is, uh, is you know, sort of targeted at a very specific theme. And we wanted to have some flexibility for that thematic rotation, but we don't want to overdo it, right? So we're looking for things that uh, would still carry sort of those that, that longer term time horizon. Let's talk about your other ETF, SAGP. Like SAMT, this one is another multi-themed active ETF, but this one focuses on global policy opportunities. What does that mean? Well, it may be a poor commentary on the way that uh, government works, but uh, you know a lot of corporate operators and special interests uh, sort of try to carry favor with uh, parties in power, and so they will lobby uh, the U.S. federal government. And what we try to do is, and, and over time have developed a, sort of a, sorry. So what we try to do over time is sort of identify the themes where companies are really putting their money where their mouth is. We look at corporate lobbying almost as an R&D expense. It's sort of less understood by Wall Street uh, as traditional fundamental metrics may be, but we've shown empirically that it can have uh, a very positive impact on, on the bottom line. So as the parties in power change, whether that be in the White House or it be uh, up on, uh, on Capitol Hill, you know, the, the, the different topics that companies try to lobby and change laws and regulations on will also change. And, and that's what drives the themes in the portfolio in any given point in time. Nick, we follow new ETF launches very closely here at ETF.com, and it sure seems that new active ETF launches have picked up in a big way. 
After years and years in which passive ETFs have dominated the industry, do you think Active's moment has finally arrived? We, we do think Active's moment, Active's moment has arrived and, and really because of the change in the cost of money, right? For a decade following the financial crisis, uh, money cost nothing. And so it really was follow the flows and, and sort of passive drivers uh, would typically do very well. And the largest stocks would uh, sort of carry the most the most weight. As, as that starts to break down, uh, investors will probably gravitate towards greater granularity of portfolio construction. That, of course, means selectivity. Uh, we think theme thematic is a really important way to play that, but there's certainly stock pickers out there that will that will do the same. But to the extent to which the uh, financial conditions have tightened, uh, that is really what will uh, drive uh, active, active share for some time.